Well, what do I do now? I got nervous. I was playing. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start. I'm going to show you how to do a setup over a known point. This is point number one. Over there, I have a prism pole. That's point number two. And then point number three. Point number three is mainly there so we can show the uh, elevation transfer probably in a later video. First, going to get out our instrument here. And as I'm pulling this out, I'm typically starting it up. We have one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand. And it should start up. If you don't do that, honestly, it will mess up. You'll see it, it won't start up and people say, what's wrong? I'm going to temporarily put that there because I kind of stepped over one step here. Legs. Get them things out first. I want a slick concrete floor, so I'm going to be trying to, trying to be careful here because there are ways to keep it from sliding out, but I don't have those here. So for that reason, I always keep a hand on the instrument. About thirty thousand dollars, it could just fall down. It'd be no fun. There is a, a little center line here that I center these screws out to, because that's what you level up with. And I can see that they're not centered, so I'm gonna go ahead and center them all, and they're all good. On this onboard onboard display here, it automatically prompts when you have the onboard display to a level menu. Now, this is the key here. I have a point on the ground, point number one. I pick up with my two hands here, and I pivot on this leg here. So that laser's dead center. This is probably the most critical part of it that people kind of start sliding around and acting stupid and stuff and don't know what they're doing, I can tell you immediately. So I'm here, pivot on one, you see how it's easy? Get really, really, really nice and tight over the point. See there? Slide down. It's kind of scary, huh? So if I have to at this point, I could do just a little slide over, but I want to be really close to it. Otherwise, you'll run out of screw whenever you're trying to set up. So. At this point, if I'm in the grass, you can see it's, it is sliding a bit. If I'm in the grass, I'm going to stomp on my legs. One, two, three. Get them nice and tight in the ground. Then you're going to work just these. You're not going to be working these anymore. Not the screw anymore, just the legs. And I look at whatever side my bubble's on, which is kind of high here, but it's, it's over here. My bubble's over here. Whatever side it's on, if it's closest to that leg, I'll drop that leg until it flies across and it's either center or it goes to another leg. Try to get the one closest to me. So I just drop it down, and it's kind of hard to see, but right there, it's in line with this leg now, and it's far away, so I'm gonna have to come up. I'm gonna come up until, until I'm floating. I'm floating right here, and you'll actually notice I'll kind of use my hand as a cam so this leg doesn't just flop down on me. And a lot of times I'll put my foot on there too to keep it from pulling up. Lock it down, and I'm just floating. I'm not really close now. I can do a, a more accurate level bubble now with these. So, the best way to do these is if you look, you want to come in close, get a shot here. You have little arrows. It's telling you which way to turn these to make these level. If you put the face of this in line with two of these here, or one single one at the back, both waves will work. They'll actually read correctly. So, when I turn this back one here, this direction towards me, it goes down. So it goes down the screen until it goes to a green check. When it's at a green check, that means I gotta work the other two. Now the difference here is these two, I work together. I'm gonna turn them both inward and it's gonna shoot right. Whenever it gets to a green check, we stop. All right, so basically at this point, I may not be perfect, but it can compensate for that error. So if we look down at the ground, I'm actually pretty good. I just kind of looked out, but Let's say I was off a little bit. I would just loosen here and I would slide to make that adjustment and then I would tighten it back down. Now, a lot of times, again, I'm, I'm good. A lot of times this will go slightly at a level and you'll have to do what I call wash, rinse, repeat. So you'll have to repeat the, the two steps before this. But when we're good here, a lot of people forget this. Make sure you hit the green check on the screen. If you don't do that, it won't automatically connect to that data collector, which, by the way, something I forgot. When you turn this on, turn this on right after it, because it takes a minute to reboot, so we might be sitting here waiting. So, turn it on immediately. It might slow us down a little bit. We'll be okay. So, again, green check. Now, it can connect to the tablet remotely via Bluetooth. So, uh, like I said, I should have been starting that up, so it's going to be a second. Uh, basically wait for it to prompt up it should automatically connect when it when it comes on 
If it doesn't for, for any reason, you'll go to what's called the device connections. This is actually the same, it's, it's not mirroring, but it's the same software in each of them. You would go into your device connections here and then uh, connect that way. This is just a Windows tablet, basically like a Windows computer. It's got like eight gigabytes of RAM, all that stuff on it. Let's see, and it's connected via Bluetooth here. This handle is actually the long range Bluetooth. If you'll notice here, it just, it lit up blue. I don't know if you've seen that before, but because it lit up, it means it's using long range and connected and all. Software's booting up. See how long this takes? This can feel like a million years if you're ever doing like a demo for somebody. You're like, gosh, I forgot a step, messed up. There you, go. you heard that connection. We made the connection, all these lights lit up. It says it here and You'll see something new on the screen here. Right now we don't have it. There's a setup that will come up, a setup button. See here, if we don't connect automatically, which sometimes it's a little slower pace, you can go into devices, like I said. You can make the connection by touching it and you'll, you'll prompt there. I don't think it made the connection correct. So even though it says it here, it didn't establish it quite right. And now we have a red X on that Bluetooth. There it goes to the regular one. Oh, it went back. This is where it could kind of, it's a real finicky piece of equipment, so you get your process down and you pretty much stay that, that process every time. Let's see what happens. It says it's on. And hopefully it'll come up from it. So, like I said, that button will come here and you'll see a setup button. This one I know is finicky, so I'll probably have to end up turning it off and on. Mm -hmm. I wish they had a pause button in the iPhone. You know Android mm -hmm. has a pause button in it? I had one for a long time. Oh, there it finally got it. See, you just had to think it out. So now we're connected. It's no longer an X there. And I know it said it the whole time here, but it was kind of talking and confused. Uh, you'll notice there's the setup button I talked about. That's new. That's completely new. And then you have these prompts up top here. That's not a button. That's just a visual prompt to say, hey, you're connected. This one with a little lock on it means it's locked on a prism or not locked. It's currently not locked. The prism's over there. So now we'll go into our setup. And what we want to do is an over known. And we would level up if we needed to at this point. We're good though, because we just did that. Always have this compensator on. Now we're going to do this without height. So uncheck height. It kind of simpl simplifies the process if you do that. And this here, anytime you see this little bubble here at the top right, it's the next step. So we're going to go to the next step. Now, it says, it kind of gives you directions here. Select station point. Station is where your robot is sitting. That's point number one. That's where you're at. Now it says select target point. Target point, we're going to go over here to it now. It's on the ground. We're going to walk over here so we can kind of show that process for it. We walk to our control point. And... Kind of step just the same and I'm going to turn this upright and I'm going to do a search. So when I do a search in here, I go to the top center button there and I go move and search. Now I have option of left and right. Those are really the only ones I used in the beginning. So I'm going to go right. And if you look over there, that robot just locked on me and locked on the prism. Hey, you're doing real good. Thanks. So it said it and it prompted it said I'm locked on you now. Now you see that has a lock, right? So anytime you're using your prism pole to backsight something, you're gonna get the most accurate position by having it as low down as you can. We currently have it up high and that's any kind of sway or error in the rod will be shown in, in greater error basically. So I'm gonna flip it down because I'm gonna get better results on now. And the one hand I do, I'm gonna put my point right there in the center of it. Now, I now select select my my target point, my target point number two, and I hit start. Now I said point store, but it didn't really. It's just kind of a glitch. I hit store now, and you'll see the green check prompt up right there. That means you're good on the point. So we can hit green check, and okay, and our setup is complete. So that's just setup over and known. Best way to do it. We'll go over the uh, elevations here in just a second. I'll do a whole other setup. That's it. Pretty decent. It's easy, right? Sounds easy, right? 